What is going on? This is Alex and thanks for watching my first video on how to pass the aircraft mechanic orals and practicals. First off, congratulations, you're almost there. This is the last step of the certification process. Becoming an aircraft mechanic is a big accomplishment. Actually, a uh, question I always get is, how hard is the test? My answer, the test is easy. All the hard work is done in the previous days, weeks, months, or years in preparation to the day. The day you can call yourself an aircraft mechanic. Who am I and why you should listen to me? My name is Alex and I'm from Spain. I moved uh, to the United States about four years ago to pursue a career in aviation. I got my AMP about a year ago and I currently work at a repair station in Naples. I attended a local 147 AMT school called Lorenzo Walker Technical College. While I was studying for my test, I came to YouTube to find a video that explained how to pass the test. I couldn't find one, so I decided to create this video to help future airmen pass their test. So let's get right to it. First thing you need to do is set a day. And you must do whatever it takes to make it happen by that day. For example, um, I'll tell you a quick story. Me and my girlfriend were gonna go to Miami to spend the weekend. I knew that it would put me behind. So guess what I took? I took all my books and my notes and I took an hour from Saturday and an other hour from Sunday and studied. Like I say, you must do whatever it takes to make it happen by this day. You can even call your DME and schedule a OMP. That's just going to give you an extra push. Now that you have a day, you need an accountability partner and tell that person that you're gonna take the test on a specific day, no matter what. This person can be anyone you do not wanna disappoint. So maybe your instructor, your parents, your girlfriend. Like I say, it can be anyone, just someone you don't wanna disappoint. Third step will be to choose what rating you want to take first. Airframe or power plant. When I was going through my testing, I took general and power plant first since I felt more comfortable with power plant. And then after I passed it, I started studying for my airframe. Concentrate in one rating. If you feel you can do all three at the same time, go right ahead. But my recommendation is to, to focus on the one that you feel the most competent and focus on that rating and study every single day. I repeat, every day until you get it done. The fourth tip is probably the most important. From today on, consider the PTS your best friend. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't use it or they will just read it and then forget about it. But I will teach you how to properly use it to your advantage. First thing you need to do is download all three PTS guides right now. They're for free. Go to the FA website and download them. For this example, I'm going to use wood structures on the airframe PTS. First thing you need to do is locate the reference books. In this case, the AC 4313-1B and the FA handbook, the um, 8083-31. Number one says, exhibits knowledge in as a minimum two of the following elements. A is inspection tools for wood structures. What you're gonna do is open uh, both reference books and you're gonna locate 
all the tools you can use for, with uh, for the inspection of wooden structures and you're going to highlight them. This is going to take a lot of time. So the best, the most effective way to do it is during class. While your uh, instructor is giving a lecture, open up your PTS and locate all the oral elements in your reference books. That way, when you start studying for your test, everything is highlighted. Now, let's talk about the practical portion of the test. You need to know what level one, level two, and level three practicals mean. You can find this in page five in the Airframe PTS. I wouldn't really worry about uh, level one projects since you only need to know the basic facts and principles. Now let's talk about how to get ready for your practicals. So what you need to do is read every single practical element. So as we see here in the sample, you have from A1 to A11. I would only concentrate in the level two and level three. Forget about level one. You already have enough to study. Just concentrate in twos and threes. And ask yourself as you read each of the um, practical elements, can I satisfactorily perform the task? If the answer is no, you need to get help. You can call your instructor or if you have uh, a and P friend, just go over each element with them. Number five, do not fully rely on the ASA, Jeppesen, or any other OMP guides. As the name implies, they should only be used as guides. Using these guides as the only studying source could lead you to fail the test. And how do I know that? Well, because that's exactly what I did. I memorized the questions on the Airframe ASA study guide, and when I took my Airframe Oral, I was asked about three questions from the ASA guide. The rest of the questions, I had to use my own knowledge to answer them correctly. So I used the OMP guides, but used them along with the PTS and reference books. I know it's overwhelming. It is easier to just open up the book in the back side and just study the and memorize the oral questions, but you will find that the knowledge you gain will benefit you throughout your career as an AMP. Beware of the new changes. The FAA has recently changed the way OMPs are conducted for applicants seeking an aircraft mechanic certificate. In the old test, you were able to retake only the parts you failed in. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. If you fail one of the parts of the orals or practicals, you have to retake the entire section that pertains to that part. So example, if you were taking the airframe oral and you failed airframe inspections, you will have to retake all the subjects listed in section two aircraft structures of the airframe PTS, which are wood structures, aircraft covering, aircraft finishes, sheet metal, and non-metallic structures, welding, assembly and rigging, and aircraft inspections, even though you answer all the oral questions for every single of those correctly. Another major difference is that before, the DME was able to choose the oral questions and practical projects, but in the new test, a computer will randomly select the questions and projects. These changes alone should be enough reason to make you put extra hours and extra work to study and truly understand the content rather than memorizing. And my last tip is to get familiar with the content in the reference books. Before taking the test, be sure you're familiar with the content in the AC 4313-1B on the FARS and the FA handbooks. It will save you so much time to know where the different formulas, charts, and regulations are located while performing your practical projects. 
because for some projects you will be allowed to use a reference uh, book. For example, if you have to torque something and you must use a stanchion, well, knowing where the uh, torque formula is in the AC4313 1B can save you a lot of time and also is going to prevent you from, from getting nervous because you can't find you know, a chart or a formula. And this concludes my video. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, it was helpful. Please comment below. Let me know what you think. And please hit the subscribe button. Take care and good luck on your test.